You can help your child learn to communicate mathematically by asking her to explain what she must do to arrive at a certain answer to a math problem. You can ask your child to draw a picture or a diagram to show how she arrived at the answer. Welcome to Ruth Straight Talk, the channel designed to help you, your students and your children live fuller lives, become lifelong learners, and grow into the awesome human beings you were designed to be. I'm Cynthia Ruth. In this video, I will share with you several strategies to help your child or your student solve math problems using pictures. Also, don't miss my bonus strategy at the end of this video. Mathematical reasoning ability means thinking logically, being able to see similarities and differences in objects or problems, making choices based on those differences and thinking about relationships among things. You can encourage your child or your student's mathematical reasoning ability by talking frequently with them about these thought process, processes and re reinforcing them through pictures. A popular strategy using pictures in math classes gives students another way to access math concepts and can spark great conversations. This visual routine works well for young audiences and many teachers continue to use these pictures with older students to enhance their learning. Students can get excited about math with pictures and images using and using picture changes who is perceived as being good at math. We can show students that math isn't about algorithms and shortcuts. It's about seeing patterns and applying what we know to what we have seen. Number one, solving problems with pictures. Word problems and counting can be difficult and teachers have long used pictures to provide another way to access numer numerical data. To help students make sense of math, you are asking them to do these pictures of quantifiable objects to create an easy entry point. Take a look at the photo of a carton of eggs above. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Now show the photo to students and ask them what they notice and what they wonder. They might say it's an egg carton and that there are different colored eggs. Next, ask how would you count the eggs in the picture? Encourage them to verbalize how they would count the eggs. One student might see three eggs in the top row, three eggs in the middle row, and three eggs in the bottom row. Adding three plus three plus three equal nine eggs. Another student might see three rows of three eggs and solve the problem as three times three equal nine eggs. A third student might see a picture of just nine eggs in total, while another student may see three brown eggs, three blue eggs, and three pink eggs. If you ask the student how many eggs were not blue, he could say nine minus three equals six eggs that are not blue. With this one picture, you have covered counting, addition, subtraction, and multiplication strategies. This strategy helps create many entry points for everyone to participate. Every student will count the eggs in their own way and you can use a variety of pictures to get an idea of each student's approach to counting. Number two, finding topic and grade appropriate pictures. One factor is to find age-appropriate pictures, for example, 
four primary grades since counting, addition, and subtraction are the core focus. Pictures that have missing pictures or spaces are ideal. Find pictures where the objects are clearly visible. You can also use the same pictures for different grades. If students have seen a picture in a previous grade, challenge them to find many different ways to find the answer as they can. They will find additional ways to counting objects because their number sense is strengthened with each passing year. B. Upper Elementary Multiplication and division are primary focus here, so pictures with arrays would work. Make sure to extend the conversation so that it includes questions about division. For instance, you could show a picture of 25 marbles and three empty jars. Ask how many marbles would go into each jar and how many marbles would be left over if they put the equal amount in each jar. How about teaching fractions? Teaching fractions and decimals can be tricky. Pictures of measuring tapes or measuring cups are useful for teaching fractions, and pictures with multiple components also work in order to ask about the different parts. My favorite is using pictures of pizza or pies with some slices missing. Teaching decimals. Money is a prime source for conversation about decimals. Therefore, picture, pictures that focus on counting money will come in handy for percentages and decimals. Teaching percentages. The concept of percentage goes hand in hand with shopping. When a sign says 40% off, what does that really mean? When signs say buy one, get one free, are you really getting something for free? Retail signs are an ideal way to making sense of percentages. How about ratios and rates? This middle school topic is much more enticing to students if they have to compare different objects. Using actual grocery store advertisements as a way of teaching rates is engaging to middle school students. This shows how adults use rates to find the best deals while shopping. How about geometry? Shapes, lines, and angles are easy to find in everyday lives. Pictures with different shapes can help students realize they use math and the geometry all the time. From parking cars to building houses, geometry is easily accessible through images. For our bonus tips, how to find appropriate pictures. Finding pictures to use for your math lesson is easier than you think. Here are a few tips. One, search for pictures on math websites. Use sites to identify objects that will appeal to your students. If you use a stock photo site, most elementary students will enjoy pictures of donuts, cupcakes, or any type of candy. Number two, choose an arrangement that sparks conversation. A Google image search for something like donuts will turn up a variety of different configurations. So select a scattered pattern. Start with searching for your item and then look at the pictures for the patterns. Number three, Take your own pictures. Take photos of objects at your local grocery store or countable items in your home, such as beads, buttons, or coins. Especially now when virtual classes or lessons are being more prominent in education, using pictures are highly engaging to children. The focus is no longer on who calculates the answers the quickest, 
It is on true understanding. We need to help our students actually see math that is all around them. No matter where you find your pictures, students would be excited and want to participate in conversations regarding the pictures. After all, math is all around us. So there you have it, several ways to help your students solve math problems using pictures. If this video has helped you, please leave me a comment at the bottom of the screen. Also, if you have a story, a tip, a strategy, a question, or just some advice that you would like me to share with my audiences, please also leave me a comment at the bottom of the screen. Click on these videos above for more awesome information on education and parenting. As always, I am so glad that you visited with us at ruthstraighttalk.com. Please subscribe to my channel and until next time, happy learning and goodbye.